Right, guys, uh, what we're going to focus on first of all is this up here, the maximum height. So the maximum height of a projectile is um, obviously going to be something to do with some sort of distance. In this case, you've seen this one, uh, S equals uh, V nor T plus half a T squared. And what you did was you probably used this one or a version similar to find out the time of flight. So if I redraw a projectile like this, you can see that the maximum height occurs up here. Time of flight is the whole time across to where it lands. So the time when it's at its maximum height is half that time of flight. So all we need to do is use our time of flight values from uh, before. So T is uh, minus two VI on A, or how have you felt most comfortable about working that out? And then we, halve this value, or T at, I'm going to call it max, max height is minus VI over A. So this negative, it doesn't really matter, all we're caring about is the vertical component initially, and acceleration due to gravity is going to be negative because it's downwards, which means that cancels out, which means you're left with a positive value for here. And then all you need to do is take that number, plug it into this thing, and it will actually tell you um, this is going to be a positive number because it's going to be going upwards. This part here is going to be a negative number because it's coming downwards. And it's actually going to tell you how high above the launch height it was when it actually took off. So in uh, all of these projectile cases there is a maximum height. Um, sometimes the questions will be phrased like, you know, here's a person throwing a rock and um, here's a building. Can they actually throw it over the top of the building if they throw it at um, whatever launch velocity, whatever launch angle, whatever launch speed, okay? So that's that type of question. It's pretty much the only time you're going to have to use every term in this equation for the whole year. But you've just calculated that one, so you've calculated time. This is the initial, uh, that one there, is the initial vertical component. Um, this here is gravity and this here is the same version of time. So you're given every single piece of that puzzle and therefore you should be able to work it out but just by plugging numbers in. Okay. The next thing that I want to talk about is air resistance and uh, the range of a projectile. So, um, well, there's there's really no formulas and stuff that no formulas we can use to work this out. Um, it's basically just a, a conceptual understanding. So, air resistance, air drag, is any sort of uh, resistance that affects velocity at all. Um, so impacts on velocity. Notice how I haven't said just the vertical or just the horizontal because it's actually both. So it impacts on the horizontal one, impacts on the vertical one. The higher it is, the more the impact is. So we can say that drag is proportional to V, some sort of V, um, some sort of speed or velocity, and I'm fairly certain you'll actually find it's proportional to the speed squared. So if we're going twice as fast, we've got two times as much squared, so four times the drag. If it's uh, half the speed, a half squared is a quarter, so we've got a quarter of the drag force, which is why it's a lot more fuel efficient to drive slower than it is to drive faster in most cases. So the only thing you're really gonna need to be able to do is talk conceptually about its impact on both of these two. Horizontal is to do with the range, vertical to do with the time of flight. If it makes the horizontal smaller, it's obviously going to make the range smaller. So if wind drag exists, you can't kick a football or throw a tennis ball as far. That that's, just makes a fair bit of sense. With the time of flight, if it's impacting on the vertical, remember the vertical is the one that makes it go up, um, it's actually going to have slightly less time of flight. It's not, it's a weird relationship, but um, initially the velocity vertically is going to be a lot faster because wind drag hasn't had a chance to impact. It's going to slow it down going up a lot, which means that it's not going to have the same max height, not going to have the same that, it's not going to have the same this, therefore, um, you know, you've got range impacted not just by the horizontal, but by the time of flight, which means the vertical as well. So that's pretty much the only thing that you need to be able to say about the effect of air resistance on range. Unless, of course, you go into third, second, third, fourth year physics or engineering or um, fluid dynamics or something similar, then you might need to know a little bit more about it. The other one is to do with projectiles in sport. So, sports day is coming up. 
<clears throat> you all know that a javelin, which has a shape like this, um, is going to have a lot less wind drag than similarly sized or similarly heavy um, small paving stone or something like that. So let's say they've both got a mass of a kilogram, which means, and you can throw them at the same launch velocity as before. Um, the frontal surface area is the thing that actually impacts on the amount of air drag. So not just the speed squared, we've actually got frontal surface area. Okay, so if you're talking about a spherical object, the frontal surface area of a spherical object is a circle. So this one here, the javelin, actually has, you know, it's kind of spherical. It's really, really small though. Um, the second one here is more rectangular. So it depends on how much surface area there is. It also depends on, um, so surface area. We've also got the shape. We've also got the material. Um, and things like that. So if you're asked, you know, what sorts of things impact on the air drag of a projectile in sport, um, the weight or the mass of the object, that doesn't do a thing. So we don't really care that it's, you know, a kilogram and a kilogram. What we care about is the shape and the material, the surface material that it's made out of. Tennis ball, cricket ball, um, both similar frontal surface areas, but tennis ball fuzzy it which is why it slows down from 200 and whatever it is k's an hour a lot faster than a cricket ball will okay um, this one here is to do with calculations these two here are to do with uh, concepts um, all you need to be able to do is is explain those concepts in a little bit of detail and you'll be fine okay 